Hi, thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, so I think I have some great ideas for some video games. Oh, you want to hear them now? Oh, that's great, because I got my notebook here. What? Oh, oh yes, my I have a bit of a rash developing on some wearing some gloves. Sorry about that. Anyway, so what am I What? You you wanna make a game about gloves. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Ah, uh, the Nintendo 64. Whether or not you're a fan of it, you can't deny its legacy. Especially in the realm of 3D adventure games. Super Mario 64 was the innovator, and Banjo-Kazooie was perfection in relation to the 3D world collectathon. Then, there was Glover. Glover is a weird one. I've actually owned this game my whole life, yet I've never played it. Basically, whenever I sat down to play it, I immediately just wanted to play Banjo-Kazooie. So I did. Developed by Blitz Games, who made... Oh dear. And published by Hasbro Interactive, which means my intro didn't make any sense, Glover is a game that got mixed reception. IGN gave it 8.3 out of 10. But hey, IGN makes great reviews. There aren't a whole lot of reasons for anybody older than 12 to pick this one up. <sighs> and GameSpot gave it a meh. Is it good or is it bad? It's probably neither. Let's see if the glove fits. Glove. That's like the worst joke I've ever written. So, what's the story, you may ask? There's a wizard here making potions, thing goes boom, glove goes out the window, the wizard falls down a hole, and now you have to collect gems. Wow. Brief. I have far too many questions to ask about this intro. Ladies and gentlemen, let's do a countdown. Number 10. Who is this man? I mean, I know he's a wizard and all, but what's his goals? What's his ambitions? Number 9. Why did his hands fly from his wrist so easily? Number 8. Why would you throw the containers of liquids in the potion as well? Doesn't that kind of defeat the purpose of a container? Number 7. Were the hands sentient to begin with? And if so, why do you need to wear them? Number 6. How the hell are the gloves sent in in the first place? Number five. What's up with the wizard's beard? It looks like you can impale somebody on it. Number four. What does the evil glove, Cross Stitch, want to do? I mean, he threw some crystals around and made things red. Number three. What are these hats? Why do they have eyes? Why are they squinting at me? It scares me. Number two. What do the crystals actually do? And the number one question about this introduction is... Why does the wizard have two right hands? Play me off! The main gimmick is that you get to play as a glove, which is what everyone wants to be. The objective is that you have to take this ball to a cave where the wizard is set in stone. Bring all the balls back, which are actually crystals, revive the wizard, and defeat Cross Stitch. Basically, you have to guide the ball through an obstacle course which is chock full of hazards, platforming, and enemies. Think of it as a longer stage of Super Monkey Ball with Super Mario 64. Mash them together and you get a glove. To traverse this environment, you need to manipulate the ball. Throw it, dribble it, slap it, walk on it, roll it, transform it. Push it, pull it, bop it! And the controls are fairly confusing. A and B do different types of throws, but A has two types of throws whether you hold it or tap it. They all have different arcs, forces, and use. You can also dribble the ball, but I'm not too sure how you actually do it. Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. The problem is trying to time and execute these moves on the fly. There are segments where you have little time to make your right shot. The controls are confusing, and hey, if the controls are confusing in a platformer, well, you messed up. But here's the thing, I'm sure you can actually understand the controls if you played enough. You can actually get really good at the controls if you stick at it. The problem is, is that, well, Glover doesn't really hold my attention. Why? The atmosphere, the feel. Visually, this game is rough and dated. I know it's a bit unfair to comment on graphics on a game that's 17 years old. Oh god, I'm old. But if you look at Banjo-Kazooie, well, there's so much detail that it doesn't look dated. In Glover, the fog. Oh, the infamous N64 fog. It really detracts from the stages. I know I'm talking about Banjo-Kazooie a lot, but fuck it, it's my video. The worlds felt alive. They felt like actual stages with themes and so forth. Here, they're all floating islands in the sky. Sorry, fog with mild aesthetic differences. Banjo-Kazooie, the beach pirate world, Treasure Trove Cove. That was one memorable, bright, sunny, integrated level. You felt like it was an actual island with pirates and treasure and fucking shots. Ah! 
But here, is this supposed to be a pirate theme? Ooh, pirate swords in the sky? Maybe it's me having too high of a standard, but the fact remains, the levels feel soulless. Because every level has to have edges in the sky for sake of challenge, the worlds themselves don't feel real or integrated, or at least interesting. It just seems to be a marble madness stage with a skin. Like the Haunted Mansion theme levels are really cool aesthetically and design-wise, but they're in the sky! What haunts and mansions in the sky? Mad Monster Mansion had so- Nope, that's enough of Banjo-Kazooie. Nope, nope. Same could be said for the enemies. They aren't contextual to the levels. The first level, which I think is some ancient Rome or Egypt level or something, has- What the fuck is that? Yeah, I'm not even going to attempt to describe what that actually is. There are also blue chickens that juggle and throw eggs. That raises too many ethical questions. Same for the collectibles. They're just these cards. There's really no fun in collecting them, and they don't even make little jingles like, God damn it, I did it again! Look, I know that I'm being pretty harsh. Hell, I might have pissed off a bunch of you who really enjoyed this game, but I just find no drive to complete this game. But saying that, there are some positives I have to address. Look, in terms of ideas, this is definitely an original concept. The idea you have to control a ball that's independent to you is pretty cool, throwing it, manipulating it, and using it to attack. Granted, they aren't perfect, but they tried. By pressing R, you can change the crystal into a bouncy plastic ball, a heavy bowling ball, and a small metal ball, all with their different properties. For instance, the bowling ball can take more abuse and can stun enemies, although sometimes it just breaks. The metal ball is easier to control and is magnetic, and the red and yellow ball which you use most, you can bounce. And guiding the ball through these levels does feel like an accomplishment. They're even needed to defeat the bosses. Oh yeah, did I mention the bosses? I can sum them up all in one word. Nah, they aren't memorable in the slightest, and quite honestly, the clown scares me a lot, so the less time we talk about him, the better. Also, the idle animation is pretty funny. <laughs> it's like he's a hand, but he's only a glove. He can never be a hand. He can never live up to that expectation. And the hub world changes with the completion of each world. At the start, it's all red and dark and gloomy and- ah! Jesus. Yep, those are definitely spikes coming out of a tent wall in a circus. Yep. Oh yeah, in this 3D platformer, one where you have to jump from high ledges to another, you have fall damage. They actually put falling damage in the motherfucking- Oh wait, that joke was already done. As you can see, I really just couldn't get into Glover. It's too slow and patient for my tastes. And to me, this game is a matter of personal preference. Glover requires patience and slowing down and really thinking about what your next line of action is. But unlike MGS, where you are actively avoiding combat to make sure you survive, here, it's a fucking ball. You kind of lose the impact. That doesn't excuse the fact that the worlds are boring, and to add salt to the wound, Glover runs so slow. Getting from one world to the next is an ordeal. Oh, there's a cartwheel, but that makes you go even slower, so you can't just- <coughs> I can't knock on Glover for being a terrible game because it's really not a terrible game, it's average. The ideas were good, it's just that they weren't executed very well. I don't know, maybe it's just me. I mean, I didn't grow up with the game, so I'm not really sure what someone sees in it who did grow up with this game, but I don't know, I'd just rather play Banjo-Kazooie or something. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just average. And that's all I can see in it. I can't see the best. Sorry guys. Do you guys want to see my town? Have you ever, ever felt like this? How strange things happen? Are you going round twist? Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. Can't believe you made it this far. I'm surprised.